There's a big buzz right now about ChatGPT, an AI powered tool that allows you to interact with it in a conversational way, as you can see on screen here. And where it's really changing up the game is you can tailor the way it responds based on what you say. So if it gives you an answer to a question which is a bit long, you can say shorten it and it will very quickly come back with a shortened answer. But where it does fall short is if you were to give it a chess position, well it can't just crunch that position and instantly tell you the best move to play. And that's where a traditional chess analysis engine comes in, just like the one on screen. So what you'll get is a number of lines suggested which show the top computer moves in the position. But where this falls short is whilst you get the moves, you don't get the narrative just like you would with ChatGPT. Enter Decode Chess, because what they're doing is marrying these two concepts together in a beautiful way. And again, powered by AI. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in this game here. It was played between Magnus Carlsen, who's the current world champion, and John Ludwig Hammer, who had the white pieces. So let's whiz through these opening moves and then we'll pause and see what's going on. So white takes the center. Magnus then strikes with this pawn push. We see this one go there and the knight now hops to the edge of the board preparing to start attacking white. And if you look to the right hand side here, this is where things are just completely different when you use decode chess. So you have these text boxes which give information about what's going on in the position. Now I'm going to add an engine here, I'm going to click this fish, the stockfish. So it adds some engine lines as you can see. And this is the traditional chess analysis view. But what you don't get is analysis of why these moves are being suggested. And that's where these text boxes come in. So I'll turn off the engine now and we'll look at the text. So it explains first the engine's recommended move. So you can see here it says the best uh, move in this position is knight to b3. Why? Well, here's the power of it. It tells you in these bullet points. So it supports the pawn on d4. And as you can see, there's lots more than text underneath that. You can click into these sample lines, see what's going on. It's like having a chess teacher sitting next to you as you analyze. And then the other really cool thing, if I jump back here, not play knight b3, is that it also explains the move that got played in the position. So it gives that insight which you just can't get when you're analyzing with an engine. So if we run it on here, the pawn captures, the knight now jumps in, and again you see the text boxes popping up, and here's a really cool feature. So what if you want even more information and you wanna go deeper? Then you can click this button here, where you dig deeper on the position, it does a deep decode and spits out these results. A few moments later. Suddenly I've got more than just the summary. I can see the roles of the pieces here. I can see the threats in the position, which is very instructive in tactical positions especially. You can see good moves that can be played. And this one's really awesome. The plans in the position, what each player is trying to achieve, and then the concepts building on that this hasn't been done before in the chess world to this level of power and detail. And now jumping back to the summary here, now we see the big mistake from white. So bishop to c4 was the best move on the board because you don't walk into some later tactical problems. The bishop instead comes to b5 here as we see. And now it allows Magnus to take this pawn in the center of the board. The knight captures, that's a powerful centralized knight, but we don't see the knight recaptured here. No, Magnus brings the queen out, threatening to checkmate on this g2 square, the pawn in front of the king. So the knight hops back, blocks the mate, but now we see the problem with this bishop on b5. The black queen takes it. Now this knight moves across the board, as should have happened earlier, but Magnus gets a check. The king steps to the corner, and now we see this unleashing of some tactics. The knight is captured, the pawn takes back. He brings the other rook to the center, and now here again, you can see the computer saying, you should play the pawn to a4 here. It explains why, because you threaten to capture the queen, so the queen has to move. But that doesn't happen. The bishop develops, Magnus takes this pawn, and now here comes a beautiful checkmate. So after the rook moves here, can you see this final move? It is being drawn. 
The way to play is queen h5 check and here we see a resignation because if the pawn captures then this rook comes across and that's actually mate. The knight is blocking the escape squares of the king and this is known as Anastasia's mate. So deco chess is really a must have for anyone who's struggling to understand why the engine is suggesting moves when you're analysing your own games. And if you use the link below and the code EPIC at checkout, then for the next 60 days, you can get 30% off when you sign up to any plan. So do get on over. And if you don't believe me how good this is, just check out these testimonials on screen from many top players, including none other than Anish Giri, who just won the so-called Wimbledon of chess, the Tata Steel Masters 2023. I hope you enjoyed this one. To see something truly incredible, then check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.